I was blind, now I'm seeing in color I was dead, now I'm living forever I had failed, but you were my redeemer I've been blessed beyond all measure beautiful February morning out there. If I haven't already told you that, that's my joke of the morning. People came in. Some people laughed pretty hard. You guys didn't. But it is. Uh, that's all I can think was, what a beautiful like winter morning. And then I got like halfway here and it's like, it's November. It's not winter, right? But it is a beautiful morning. Uh, we're glad you are here. We are thankful you are here. Uh, I am here to do my weekly job of reminding you that our bulletin is full of lots of lovely, vital, uh, needed information. There was another word I wanted, but uh, information for you guys. It's not for, for anybody else, but for you guys. Uh, so if you can open your bulletins this morning, I just want to point out a couple. Three, um, Christmas Eve services we have up and Christmas Day service stuff we have up. So I don't think we've had that information up. Maybe Christmas Eve we did. But you can see we're going to have two identical services Three and five, come to one, come to both if you want. You're going to see the same thing. And then uh, Christmas morning this year is on a Sunday morning. And so we are going to have one 
uh, service at 10. It's not going to be our normal service, but we will have a service here at 10 o'clock. If you decide you want to come join us, we'd love to see you here. Um, and Casey Women will be meeting December 1st, which is like a week from Thursday. So December is here, people. December is here, and it's not even Thanksgiving. And December is here. So uh, start putting stuff on your, your calendar. Um, thank you for everybody who picked up uh, Christmas, community Christmas basket uh, pendants or whatever they're called, uh, ornaments. They're all gone. We appreciate that. Just uh, make sure you get them turned back in so we can turn them in and kids can enjoy them. All right. If you have prayer requests, you can use the tear-off. Uh, there's, there's a side on there that is blank. You can put those in the prayer offering boxes on your way out, and those will get prayed for by staff all week. And if you're wanting information, you can use the other side of the tear-off. I think we all have that covered. Anybody got any questions? Anybody? Anybody? Good. I'm glad Derek didn't raise his hand because I'd have had him come up here, right? All right, let's pray this morning before we start this service. Lord God, thank you for a beautiful morning. Thank you for uh, a beautiful snowfall. Thank you for the pure white that it shows us, uh, a bright, bright white, Lord, Lord, that this morning just, I wondered uh, how bright you shine after looking at the snow and feeling blinded. I can't imagine how much more bright you shine, Lord. And then I'm reminded that we are to shine bright for you because you live in us. So, so, Lord, this morning we're here to, uh, to worship you and thank you for, for allowing us to be part of your family, for loving us, Lord. Um, let us worship you in song. Uh, let us sing with all our heart. Uh, let us sing like you are, are the only one listening, Lord, because you're the only one that we're singing to that, that matters, Lord. So hear our songs. Hear our songs of praise. And, Lord, you know our hearts. If we come in uh, heavy-hearted, if we come in with uh, laid down with burdens, help us to give those to you, Lord. Um, help us to still, still sing songs of praise to you and adoration and know that you still know our broken hearts, that you still know our needs, our desires, our wants. Lord, as Rocky brings uh, this message this morning for us, Lord, I just pray that you would bless his words, that you would bless uh, his time up here, that we would hear what it is that you want us to hear, um, that that we wouldn't just hear it so we can go be uh, knowers of the word, but that we could hear it and go be doers of the word, Lord, so that your bright light that's in us would shine before others and you could get glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you can stand and join the worship team. All right, good morning, everyone. Does anyone here have anything they're thankful for this week? Hopefully, hopefully yes, hopefully. We're going to sing a really simple song. Thank you, Lord. When we get to the chorus, we want to have a little fun today. So if there's anything that you're thankful for, feel free to raise your arms, wave your bulletin around, just be careful of your neighbor, right? Don't hit them. But uh, we want to be, we want to have some fun today and, and sing some praises. So.
took my sin and my shame. You took my sickness and healed all my pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I'll bless you, name. strength is failing the 
draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise on and day ten thousand years and then forever more bless the lord oh my soul oh, oh my soul worship his holy your holy name bless the lord oh my soul oh oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul i worship your holy name your holy name I worship your holy
giving thanks to you because you are good. Father, you are good in every possible way that we could define goodness. We've sung about the fact that you are rich in love. There is no one who loved me or us like you have and like you do. You loved broken people, sinful people who were opposed to you so much that you chose to come to this earth. God in the flesh gave your life for us. Thank you, Father. You are rich in love. We also sang about the fact that you're slow to anger. Well, thank you for that, that mercy, that compassion that you have where you aren't quick to anger. Where would we be, Father, if you, the omnipotent God, were quick to anger, we would be destroyed immediately. Thank you for your patience. We've gathered here on this Sunday morning, Sunday before the Thanksgiving holiday, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for what you do for us, Lord. Thank you for the blessings that you, you lavish upon us. You're not stingy with your goodness. We love you this morning. Lord, our desire is to, is to honor you. To have hearts of gratitude. Lord, as we hear your word this morning, may it be something that just sticks deep within us. And perhaps it will encourage us to be more grateful. Because you are worthy. We love you today. Our hearts are yours. This day is yours. And Lord, we pray all of this in the powerful name of our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. I do want to remind you that <clears throat> today is we're also receiving the thank offering. And you can just put that in the offering boxes as normal. And you can write on the memo. Um, thank offering. And I believe there was an email that went out for online giving, and I believe you put Costa Rica on the uh, Costa Rica YWAM maybe on uh, market for that. And again, all that comes in for the thank offering goes towards the materials for the building of the house in Puerto Viejo. That will be in January. So thank you for um, for your generosity and giving God. Showing God, again, your appreciation for his blessings to you. How many of you have ever sarcastically said, thanks a lot? Anybody ever said that? All right, nothing wrong with it. But um, this morning, our message is entitled, thanks a lot, not thanks a lot. All right. I've heard it said that we're living in a day and time in which there is an attitude of entitlement. Have you ever noticed that? We hear things like this, it's my right. There seems to be a sense that we deserve a lot. I deserve insurance. I deserve health care. I deserve to be hired. I didn't deserve to be fired. I deserve a raise. There's entitlement, an attitude of it. And it seems to me that with entitlement comes a lack of gratitude or thanksgiving. I wonder if the abundance of the things that we have has caused us to fail to be grateful for what we have. Have we come to a place that we just take those things for granted? We just kind of expect them. It's kind of nice to hear the words thank you, isn't it? Maybe you hold the door for somebody and it's kind of nice to hear thank you. And if they don't say thank you, you kind of want to grab them and pull them back out and say open the door yourself. Maybe somebody, you give them a compliment. Thank you. 
allowing somebody to go ahead of you in the grocery line, it would be kind of nice to hear, thank you. Here's a question for us. When was the last time you told God thank you for something? Today? Yesterday? Last week? This morning, we just want to focus our attention on the Sunday before Thanksgiving on the subject of being thankful and specifically as it relates to God. So the question that we have is, what does the scripture have to say about giving God thanks? We're going to focus our attention primarily this morning in the Old Testament book of Psalms. So if you have your Bible, uh, just open it up in the middle and you'll find Psalms. And um, we're going to look at a verse in the New Testament as we wrap the message up, all of them dealing with thankfulness, all right? Uh, our jumping off passage is going to be found in Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. Uh, and if you look at the heading of Psalm 100, it'll say, it'll say something like this, a psalm for giving thanks or uh, for giving grateful praise, something like that. That is, the, that is the purpose of Psalm 100. It's a thanksgiving psalm. Here's what verses 4 and 5 say. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. You and I have an incredible privilege of approaching God. Did you know that? As believers, we have been told, approach my throne. Approach the throne of grace and, and find, or find my grace to help you in time of need. What is God's throne of grace? It is his throne. We can approach him and know that we can find grace, that, that undeserved favor to help us in time of need. But the question is, how do I approach him? Is there a proper way to approach God? What do you think? There is. Psalm 100 verse 4 tells us how we are to enter his presence. Here we go. I am to enter his presence with thanksgiving and praise. That's a proper way to approach God's throne, to come into his presence with thanksgiving and praise. Let's make sure that we understand that when we approach God, we are entering the presence of royalty. Not just any king, but the king of kings, right? And, and if we were to approach a king today, we wouldn't just waltz into his presence without a sense of awe and appreciation, would we? We wouldn't just come running in as if we owned the place. We would approach the, the king with awe. How much more should we approach the king of kings with awe? We are to enter his presence with thanksgiving and praise. Now the question is, why? Why are we to enter his presence in this way, Psalm 100 verse 5 answers it. Because the Lord is good and his love endures forever. Because he is good, because his love endures forever. That's the reason that we approach him with thanksgiving and praise. We don't come in as if we are entitled for any, or to anything. We come with humility, thanking him and praising him. Now, this isn't the only place in the Psalms which shares with us the why, why we should give God thanks. I want to share with you just a handful of those Psalms, and let's see what they have to say. Why should I give God thanks? Look at Psalm 7, 17. 
It says, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Why am I to give God praise? Because he is righteous. Righteous. Righteous is a, a word that we kind of toss around a lot in church circles, isn't it? You hear it from messages, we're to live a righteous life, or we're to, God is a righteous God. We sing about righteousness, but do we know what it means? At its simplest, righteous means upright, just. And when you speak of God or refer to God as being righteous, the word perfect is a fitting definition. He's perfect. So what, what, what the psalmist is saying here is we should give God thanks because he is perfect. He's perfect in every way. Now, let me just specifically mention two ways in which God is perfect. Number one, he is perfect in sinlessness. He is perfect in sinlessness. In other words, there is absolutely no sin in God. There's not even a hint of sin in God. He is perfectly holy, perfectly sinless. Now, does this mean anything to us? Absolutely. Because you see, since God is perfectly sinless, he cannot lie. Because lying is what? Sin, right? God is perfectly sinless, so he cannot lie. Because he's perfectly sinless, he is not fickle like we can be. He doesn't change his mind on a whim. Because he is perfectly sinless, there is no deception in him. In fact, in every way that sin impacts our lives as broken human beings, God is just the opposite of that. Because he's perfectly sinless, he does not cheat. He is not unfaithful. Because he's perfectly sinless, he loves us with perfection. His motives are always pure. He is perfect in sinlessness. And David says, give God thanks because he's righteous. He's perfect. But secondly, he is perfect in justice. What does that mean to us? It means that God will never make a wrong judgment. Never. There's a lot of injustice in the world around us, isn't there? We look at, we look at the world and, and we see the powerful oppressing the weak. We see those in control abusing their power for their own benefit. And sometimes it appears that there is absolutely no justice and that wrong is prevailing. That's what we see when we look around us. But folks, never lose sight of the fact that God is perfectly just. He's not missing a thing. And judgment will come one day. And let me tell you, his judgment will be without flaw. It will be without flaw. God is not going to make a mistake and punish the righteous. Nor will he somehow overlook the wickedness of those who are not following him and reward them mistakenly. God is perfectly just. Another passage of scripture tells us this, that he does not play favorites. Aren't you glad? Because you and I, in our brokenness, we play favorites. But God is perfect. He's righteous. And we should give him thanks because he is righteous. Why should I give God thanks? Turn to Psalm 75, verse 1. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks, for your name is near. Men tell of your wonderful deeds. Why should I give thanks to God? Why should you give thanks to God? Because his name is near. You say, well, what does it mean that his name is near? When Scripture speaks of God's name, it is simply referring to who God is. God in, in his wholeness, God in his completeness. It's simply another way of saying God is near. 
God is near. And so we should give him thanks because he is near. There may be times when you're tempted to think of God as being out there somewhere beyond reach. And yes, we know from Scripture that he is seated on his throne in heaven, but we also know that he is near. You remember what Scripture says? Our body is the temple of the Lord. He is, he is in heaven, but he is here. The scripture teaches us that he is omnipresent. He is present everywhere. So understand this, God is not a distant, uncaring, unconcerned deity. One writer, a songwriter, penned these words. He's as close as the mention of his name. He's as close as the mention of his name. What does that mean to us? Well, it means that when you and I call out to him, he's not in some distant land needing to make arrangements to get to where we are. I got a delay. I missed my flight. That's not God. He is near. He's available. And so whatever I need and Whenever I need it, since he is near, since he's close at hand, then he's able to provide that. We give him thanks because he is near. The psalmist also in 75.1 says that we give thanks to him because of his wonderful deeds. Have you ever stopped to consider God's wonderful deeds and then thank him for those wonderful deeds as you thought about them? Here's a question. What wonderful deeds has God done in your life? Maybe he provided you a job at just the right time for your family. Maybe he provided you with a godly spouse. Could it be that his wonderful deeds include bringing healing to, to your body or, or to someone in your family? No doubt God has done wonderful deeds in your life by, by providing money to pay for a broken down car or a doctor bill or some other unexpected expense. Maybe he did a wonderful deed by performing a miraculous thing. I remember back in 1999, we had moved to Cincinnati, Ohio for me to go back to school in, in the fall of 98. And I think it was a fall of 98 or so, uh, I got uh, noticed that I had an opportunity to go to Israel and I could get college credit for going. Only one problem was I was going to school full time. Diane was the sole income provider. We had three kids in private school and we didn't have the money to go to Israel for me. So I, I called my mom one day and I said, Mom, do you think it would be inappropriate if I sent out some letters to some of our friends and see if they would maybe be generous and help on this trip? And she thought that would be fine. The next day, my mom called me back. We were in Cincinnati. She's in Tulsa. And she says, Rocky, uh, the summer you got married, your dad and I took your two brothers to the Philippines on a mission trip. You didn't get to go. So we're going to pay your way to Israel. <laughs> For a family living paycheck to paycheck, that was a miraculously wonderful deed. Could it be this morning that there was a wonderful deed that you would want to share? Maybe if I gave time, you would just, wherever you are, just call out and say, in brief, Here's a wonderful deed God performed for me. What has he done for you? I'll pause for a moment. What, is he, what wonderful deed has God done for you? Saved your husband's life. Absolutely. That was a miracle. Saved a daughter's life. Back in the back. Saved your husband's life with COVID. Absolutely. Wonderful deeds, right? Did you thank him for those? Anybody else? Grandkids. Finances, yes. 
Folks, he has, he's done wonderful deeds in our lives, and I think sometimes we, we, we just, not on purpose, maybe we forget to thank him for those things, the wonderful deeds. What about this? What about the wonderful deed of eternal life? God has provided the way for you and for me to have eternal life. If we understand the scripture correctly, before the creation of the world, God had a plan whereby he would come to earth as man, live a sinless life, die on a cross, paying for the sins of the human race. After three days, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he sits beside the Father and he is our advocate There is no greater wonderful deed than that. When was the last time you thanked God for eternal life? Thank God for his wonderful deeds. Why should I give thanks to God? Look at Psalm 106, verse 1. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Why should I give thanks to God? Because he is good. What does that mean? Well, whatever definition, whatever possible meanings you can come up with for good, that's God. We sing the song, God is so good. Do you know it? Can you sing it? God is is so good. You know it, don't you? God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Do you believe that? It's easy to sing those words, isn't it? God is so good. But do you ever stop to think, how he's good to you? I know we could could probably pause and think of the, the big ways God has been good to us. But what about the daily um, small ways in which God is good? I'm convinced, at least for me, and I'm guessing for you, there are a lot of things in our daily lives we take for granted because they're just a part of our normal daily routine. L- let me just give you a list, all right? It's not exhaustive. It would take us the rest of the day to do this. But he- here's just a-, a list of things and the ways that God has been good to us. Hot water. Man, that hot shower after coming in after shoveling snow. And you just stand there. Do you ever, while you're taking that hot shower, just say, thank you, God, for hot water? How about this, indoor plumbing? You didn't have to go outside and transplant the ring of frost. You'll get that. Washer and dryer. You thank God for that? I'm talking about the small things, okay? Dishwasher, hallelujah. I can load that thing. I hate to unload it, though. Silverware, plates, bowls, glasses, cups. You ever thank God for those? A stove, an oven, refrigerator, coffee. Hey, man, we should just have a prayer meeting right there and thank God for that. A comfortable bed. Folks, um, some of you know this. There's been a gentleman here off and on in our parking lot for about four weeks, a homeless man, um, in a truck. No place to go. 
It's cold out there. The other night I was, I woke up, I was trying to get to sleep actually, and I had a sheet and a blanket and a bedspread and another blanket, and I got cold. And all I could think about as I laid there was about this man named Ty, who was sleeping in a truck with no heat. And here I am in a comfortable bed, cold, with blankets, in a warm house. God, thank you for a comfortable bed, a warm bed. How about coats and warm clothing? Computers, TV, the internet. Don't you just hate it when the internet goes out? How did we survive without it? I'm talking about the daily things of life. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Restaurants, combs and brushes, which I don't need. Used to. How about your sight? Hearing? Taste? The sense of smell? Touch? We take those for granted, don't we? We just expect we're going to get up the next morning and have balance that I can walk. Dogs, not cats. You get my point, don't you? God is good. And all of these things and so many more come to us from the goodness of God. And do we give him thanks? Could I give you an assignment? Sometime this week, write down ways God has been good to you. Maybe when, in the morning time when you're reading the scripture and spending time with God, get you a little book, a little journal, and just take 10 minutes and write down everything you can think of how God has been good to you. I promise you in 10 minutes, you will not run out of things to write. Why should I give thanks to God? Because he is good. One more. Why should I give thanks to God? Psalm 107, verses 8 and 9. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Why should we give thanks to God? because of his unfailing love. I believe giving thanks to God for his unfailing love should be a regular part of our lives. His love is a loyal love. His love is a love that is steadfast. It's not subject to change. We sang this morning about his love being steadfast and sure. I want to suggest to you this morning that it's easy for us to take God's love for granted. Maybe I should just speak for myself. I was basically born in church. I think I started attending church when I was like two weeks old. I'm 56 now, and I think I've only missed Sundays twice or something like that. It feels that way. I, I, we, we never miss church. One of the truths I've heard from the earliest recollection is God loves me, and God loves you. The very first verse that I memorized in the Bible and from the scripture that I, rec- that, uh, well, I don't remember that I did this except my parents told me was the 23rd Psalm. And I think one of the other first ones was John 3.16, which says, for God so what? Love the world. I can't tell you how many messages I've heard over my lifetime where the pastor relays to those who are listening, God loves you. I can't tell you how many times in my pastoral ministry where I've told somebody either one-on-one or from the, from the platform, God loves you. And I'm afraid that for me anyway, I'm so familiar with the fact that God loves me that I don't have a proper awe and appreciation for that. I, I want to have a greater appreciation. Charles Wesley, the brother of John Wesley, wrote a hymn called, And Can It Be? I think he understood it. He he, he penned these words. Amazing love, 
How can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Amazing love. He was in awe. And perhaps if we grasp a little more completely that it was God's love that compelled him to send Jesus to this earth for sinful people so that a holy God and broken people could be reconciled together, maybe we would have a greater appreciation. Because you see, it was God's love for you and for me which gives us the reality of our sins being forgiven and that our guilt can be removed so that we can now stand before him without condemnation. It is God's love for us which provided the way for us to be adopted into his family. We can call him father. He calls us his children and he provides for us as a father does for his children. It was his love for us that provided this. It is his love for us which gives us hope of eternal life. Why should I give thanks to God? Because of his unfailing love for me. There are many more reasons to give thanks, but let me land this plane with this question. When should we give God thanks? Here's what the New Testament says, Ephesians 5.20. Sometimes giving God, is that what it says? Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When should I give thanks? At all times. In every circumstance I face, I'm to give thanks because that's always, right? Can you think of any circumstance in your life where you say, I don't know how I could say thank you to God for that. I don't know how I could give thanks to God for this, at least in the moment. Can you think of those times? It's not difficult to say, thank you, God, when everything's going great. No storms, bills are paid, relationships in good shape, no tragedies, blessings are flowing. Thank you, God. Thanks a lot, God. <laughs> right? But what about when the one you love dies? You lose your job. You've been disappointed by a friend. What about when finances are tight and you're not sure how you're going to cover this month's expenses? What about when the power goes out and you lose all the food in your freezer and refrigerator? What about when your candidate doesn't win the election? You find yourself in the hospital for more than a few days. Paul says always giving thanks to God. Thank you seems really hard, doesn't it? But if I understand what Paul is saying, under the inspiration of the Spirit, we are to always give thanks. So here's the question, how? How do I give thanks in all circumstances? First of all, I want to remind you of something I've said before. I can give thanks at all times by remembering that my circumstances do not change who God is. And since my circumstances don't change who he is, he remains the same, then I can give him thanks for who he is in the midst of my difficult moment. I can say in the most challenging time of my life, God, thank you that you love me. God, thank you for being sovereignly in control. I can thank him because he is still merciful, he's still gracious, he's still compassionate, because no matter what goes on in my life, his character never, ever changes. So that's how I can always give him thanks. There's a second how, and it's this, by knowing God has my eternal best at heart. Perhaps we're all familiar with Romans 8, 28. Here's what it says. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. We know, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. Now, 
Verse 29, we rarely read. It tells us the purpose. Look at verse 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Here's God's purpose, that we might become more like Jesus. And so in the midst of my trying situation, in the midst of the the most difficult, dark spot of my life, I can say, God, thank you that you're using this to shape me to be more like Jesus. That, the point is, my eternal best is at his heart. He's shaping me. He's changing me to be more like Jesus. It doesn't mean that I like the circumstance that I'm in. It doesn't mean that I enjoy the hard moment, but I can still say, thank you, God. You are sovereign. You know what you're doing. I don't see any good in it right now, but I trust you. I trust that this hard spot, that this difficult thing is working in my life to help me be more like Christ. Thank you. Now, to some people, that may sound like pie-in-the-sky talk. Because it's not really the normal way of thinking, is it? But it does come as we understand God has a purpose for our lives. And his purpose is our eternal best. And our, or his eternal best for us may not include an easy road. We wish it did. But ultimately... God uses the circumstances to shape us and mold us into the image of Christ. And that's how or why I can say, thank you. Always. Well, let's review and we're done. How am I to approach God? What's the answer? With thanksgiving and praise. Why should I give God thanks? Because he's righteous, he's near, he does wonderful deeds, he's good, and he has unfailing love. When should I thank God? What's the answer? One word, always. What will you give God thanks for this week? Father, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and we come into your courts with praise this morning. Thank you for life. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you, Father, for your unfailing love. Thank you for being good. Thank you for your wonderful deeds. Thank you that your name is near. Thank you that you are perfect, you are righteous. God, we no doubt are behind in our praise and thanksgiving. As we come to this specific holiday of thanksgiving, it gives us a reminder to be people who are grateful. Help us to be men and women who are thankful for what you do, who praise you for who you are. Father, most importantly, thank you for the gift of eternal life. We have hope. We have hope. Thank you. Now, as we go our way, my request is that you will keep us safe on the roads And may we live thankful lives this week and every week. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you. Next week begins Advent. We're going to begin a Christmas series. Looking forward to celebrating the holidays with you. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Go live out your faith. You are dismissed.